Do you think that the indoor season in England is long, is long enough? No. No, 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 no. I think you look you look anywhere else across the continent and you look at the primary kind of indoor teams, you look at your Germany's, your um, Eastern European teams, and yes, they are maybe more dictated by the weather, by the fact that they have to go indoors because it's so much colder there. Um, but you also look at their skills. You know, you look at how good like the Germans are when they come through and they're younger and the Dutch and the Belgians, et cetera. And it's because they take indoor seriously. Um, you know, you all of a sudden remove your ability to lift the ball and you condense the pitch size down and naturally players are going to have to improve their stick skills. They're going to have to improve their decision making. So it shouldn't be a surprise that all of a sudden these countries are significantly better than us at the lower levels, if that makes sense. Um, the fact that they this year would have in theory had everything been running as normal, condensed the indoor league down, the, the premier division down into less than a month is not sufficient in my opinion, but there'll, there'll be people that'll argue either way as well. <laughs> what, what, how do indoor keepers improve? How would an outfield keeper who then plays indoor hockey improve from that experience? Mm. I, again, more time. I think there needs to be more time for the indoor league. I think, you know, we are lucky um, in the sense we have the facilities at Stowe to use. It's a bit more of a narrow hall and a bit longer than what a normal indoor court would be. But actually, I think that benefits us because, you know, the girls that are running up and down the court, all of a sudden that court's like five yards shorter. That last little ditch feels a bit, a bit better. From a goalkeeping perspective, it's harder for, say, short corners because, you know, I practice running one that corner is a lot closer, a lot further away, sorry, than what it would be in, in a normal kind of setting. So I've got to run further. So it's working on the fitness aspect better, in my opinion. I think it's they're, they're two different games, they're two different styles. So you look at some keepers, um, I'm quite tall, so I'm like 5'9", five, 5'10"-ish. Five, for me, that works really well because I can hang the post for a long period of time and then kind of spring out, whereas some shorter keepers might not be as good at that. Um, you know, there's there's different skill sets for everyone else, isn't there? If your reactions are good, then you may be better at indoor. If you're kind of picking a ball from the top of the D is better, then you're going to be better at outdoor. It's, there's no kind of one size fits all. I think there's a place for both in both development. When I played indoor hockey as a goalie, I mean, I've not played anywhere near the level you play at, but it seemed, the shots seem to be a lot closer. Yeah. Um, do you find that when you play indoor, you're looking at perhaps uh, body language, body motion, you're trying to read uh, physical cues of intention? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. So I also think the difference as well is, is there's a lot of tactical differences. Um, indoor, you rely, and you rely on your defenders, obviously, but you rely on your defenders so much more to have their positioning absolutely spot on. If, say, my we normally set as like a 2-2-1 two, two, type position. If my two defenders or whoever's in front of me there are set in the best position, I know there's no way they're getting through. And I know that I can rely on them to do their job. Whereas at outdoor, you know, they get that lift, they get that move. Players can be, um, you know, they've got more dynamic skills that they can pull out of their armory. Um, there's, there's different things they, they can utilise or try to utilise anyway compared to what they have in the indoor game. You can't rely on you know, solidly teamwork and speed and everything else. So from a goalkeeping perspective, it's a case of making sure you're in the best position possible, but making sure that your defenders are there as well. So how much is communication to do with that? Um, oh, huge, 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 huge. And it's also... and this is something that I've obviously had to develop on as well, but it's also making sure that you're not waffling too much. I don't like that phrase too much, but it's a very good definition of what it is. Um, it's just calling it short, short and snappy and, and, you know, relying that everyone's on the same wavelength. We obviously have team meetings and stuff beforehand with our plans and we know defensively, we know our principles. Um, we know what our kind of first job, second job, third job are. And then we're able from there to build on and, and help with the attack. Um, but that comes from having a settled squad as well. You know, obviously I said before we got to the final of the year before and didn't quite make it over the line. Well, significantly didn't make it over the line. But then the next year we had essentially the same squad bar one person change. So actually that shows that, that consistency for us and that ability to kind of get to know each other's games better made a massive difference as well. Like I knew what I could trust from everyone. I knew everyone's strengths. I knew everyone's weaknesses or, or 
maybe not as strong areas and we were able to kind of complement each other that way.